In a stunning display of political golfmanship, former President Donald Trump teed off more than just golf balls during his Thursday press conference at his Bedminster Golf Club. With a flair for the dramatic that could rival a reality TV reunion, Trump delivered a monologue that was equal parts comedy roast and grievance airing, targeting Democrats, Vice President Kamala Harris, and, for good measure, America itself. The event, set against the picturesque backdrop of meticulously manicured greens, provided an idyllic setting for Trump's latest round of verbal volleys. As birds chirped and golf carts whizzed by, Trump wasted no time launching into his signature brand of political critique, sparing no one in his crosshairs. First up on Trump's hit list were the Democrats. Like a seasoned golfer adjusting his swing, he lined up his shots, aiming at the party with the precision of a pro. They're destroying the country, he declared, swinging wildly. Viewers could almost hear the collective eye roll from the other side of the political aisle. One could argue that the former president's relationship with the Democrats is like that of a golfer and a sand trap, inevitable and never-ending. Next, Trump turned his attention to Vice President Kamala Harris. Comparing her to a bunker that always seems to catch your ball, Trump criticized her with a fervor usually reserved for discussing slow play on the course. She's a disaster, he claimed, showing the same level of tact one might use when critiquing an opponent's swing. Harris, it seems, occupies a permanent spot on Trump's list of political hazards. In a move that left many scratching their heads, Trump then turned his ire toward the country he once led. Describing America as a mess, he painted a picture of a nation in decline, as if it were a golf course overrun with golfers. This self-flagellation might have confused onlookers, considering his past tenure, but it's all part of the unpredictable charm that is Trump. The Morning Joe panel, seasoned commentators of the political fairways, were quick to weigh in on the spectacle. With the precision of a caddy reading a tricky green, they dissected Trump's tirade, highlighting the absurdity and the underlying grievances. He's playing a different game altogether, noted one panelist, while another quipped, it's like he's forgotten which course he's on. As the sun set over Bedminster, leaving the greens in a serene twilight, one couldn't help but reflect on the day's events. Trump's press conference was less about policy and more about personal vendettas, a reminder that in the world of politics, much like golf, it's not just about the score, but the drama along the way. In the end, whether you're a fan or a critic, one thing is certain, Trump knows how to keep the spectators entertained. And in this game of political golf, he's always swinging for the fences, even if it means landing in the rough. Donald Trump held a second so-called news conference in as many weeks, this one at his club in Bedminster, New Jersey. Beforehand, Trump uh, was seen meeting with My Pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, who continues to deny the results of the 2020 election. As for the event, Trump spoke for just under an hour before taking several questions from reporters at the end. Initially, he held back from making personal attacks against Vice President Kamala Harris and read from scripted remarks, which included many falsehoods, lies. But as things went on, it turned into what we typically hear at the rallies. Take a look. I won Pennsylvania, and I did much better the second time. I won it in 2016, did much better the second time. I tend to poll low, in some cases really low. You know, in 2016, I was polling low because people didn't want to say who they're voting for. I don't know if that's supposed to be a good thing or a bad thing, but it is what it is. Uh, and we did very well in 2016, and we did much better in 2020, much better, but bad things happened. I think I'm entitled to personal attacks. I don't have a lot of respect for her. I don't have a lot of respect for her intelligence. And I think she'll be a terrible president. And I think it's very important that we win. And whether the personal attacks are good, bad, I mean, she certainly attacks me personally. She actually called me weird. He's weird. It was just a soundbite. And she called J.D. and I weird. He's not weird. He was a great student at Yale. He went to Ohio State. I don't think people know who she is yet. When people, because really people didn't know. You can ask the man on the street. I saw it on one of the shows today. They asked the man on the street, what's the last name of Kamala? Nobody knew. It's Harris. 
Nobody knew the last name. She's a uh, very strong communist, Lean. You're all going to be thrown into a communist system. It's a communist system. You're going to be thrown into a system where everybody gets health care. You're going to be thrown into a communist <laughs> You're going to be thrown into a communist system. By the way, Willie, let's see here. Let me just check. The Dow over 40,000 yesterday, 40,500. Our economy. Inflation cooling. Actually stronger relative to the rest of the world Mm -hmm. than any time over the past half century. Uh, Our economy. uh, Unbridled capitalism. Whether you like it or not, unbridled capitalism ruling the day in America. More billionaires than ever before. More millionaires than ever before. More wealth created than ever before. You look at real wages for working Americans. It's been going up, as you pointed out yesterday, Willie, consistently for quite some time. Uh, So uh, what what he just said is wrong. And it's more of a sort of a denigrating of the United States of America. We are a great country. We are a strong country. We are economically powerful. Again, this so-called communist country has a state like Texas that has a bigger economy than Russia. California, a bigger economy than India. Think we are strong and powerful. We are wealthy. Our economy better than any in the world. And nobody across the world thinks, oh, those Americans, they're communists. No, they're like, those Americans, American capitalism keeps rolling on, keeps getting stronger, keeps getting more powerful. Yeah, the timing, among many other things yesterday, was way off. Even on Fox, if you watched it there, he was talking about how the economy was cratering, the markets are tanking, as a little box in the corner of the screen showed the markets (laughs) soaring. And this came one day after that inflation report that heartened so many economists, liberal and conservative, showing that inflation had really cooled, that grocery prices are up just 1% year over year. And the entire sort of idea of this press conference, he was standing, we'll play another very bizarre clip of him standing in front of boxes of Cheerios and talking about how he wanted to take the Cheerios back to his cottage and have (laughs) a lot of fun with them. Um, We can get into that later. Huh. But the prices of groceries still too high, as we stipulate, still too high. But in the 24 hours before he had that press conference, this report came out showing that prices are cooling. So he's flailing. I guess, Mike, he thinks in some way because he's doing them so often, two within the space of a week, one at Mar-a-Lago, one at Bedminster yesterday at his members-only clubs, that these help him somehow, that he's maybe baiting Vice President Harris into doing a press conference of his own. But the more he talks, the less sense he makes to a lot of people, not to his hardcore supporters, but to a lot of people. And as we keep saying, the Harris campaign is thrilled to have this kind of material out there once a week. Well, don't you think that he does these uh, press conferences or whatever you want to call them just because he wants to see himself on TV? He wants to be on TV. That's who he is. Yesterday was tough. I mean, there were a couple of day baseball games. (laughs) Uh, I was watching those in the afternoon, but I decided to watch the former president at his press conference surrounded by groceries. Uh, and it was a tough watch. You have to have a lot of time on your hands to listen to him. And to Joe's point, he continually, no matter how he begins, whatever soliloquy he's talking about, whether it's about Cheerios, whether it's about the economy, he ends up running this country into the ground, yep. no matter what topic Why? it is. In one element, he was talking about the dangers to Jewish people in this country. And he said it's so severe that, here's the quote, Sam played it earlier. Maybe we have it today. We'll play it further. Honestly, you don't have a chance. So that's, you don't have a chance. If you're living in America under who he calls Camel, what does he he call her, Camel? He knows how to say it, by the way, in private moments. He says it correctly. But But the running down of this country is a consistent underlying theme in everything he says. And in terms of elections, elections are about the future. People want to feel optimistic about the future for their children, and he's the exact opposite. So here is that Cheerios moment I was talking about. This is the former president of the United States speaking about inflation at his Bedminster Golf Club. They did a nice job. Wow, I haven't gotten to see. That's good. I don't like. I don't like the 
the uh, tags very much. Look at that. Up 46 percent eggs. Wow. Up 65 percent. Wow. School lunch is up 65 percent. How can a family afford that? But look at this over here. What a nice job. I think I'm going to take some of them back to my cottage and have a lot of fun. Like the Cheerios. I haven't seen Cheerios in a long time. I'm going to take them back with me. Bacon is through the roof. They're all through the roof. The milk. Mm-mm. You know, um, made for tiny hands. Um, you know, um, <laughs> stupid country. Uh, he calls America a stupid country. Said we're a loser country. He said the American dream is dead. And again, there's there's just such a disconnect with where I think almost all Americans are. I think most Americans are really proud of this country and know that we're the greatest country in the world. We have fed more and freed more people than any other country ever. Our economy is stronger than ever. Our military is stronger relative to the rest of the world than ever. I, I, I keep talking about the goodness of America and the greatness of America because you have one party that keeps tearing down America.